Hello and welcome to Liberty Nation TV with your host, Jeff Charles. Eric Adams recently took office as New York City's new mayor this year. He was elected largely because he ran on a law and order platform and vowed to clean up crime in the city. But it might not be as easy as some might think. I have with me Liberty Nation's national columnist, Sarah Calgill, to discuss the matter. How you doing, Sarah? Welcome to the program. Doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. Well, you, you wrote a couple of different articles on, on Eric Adams. And I know that when he was first elected, there was a lot of anticipation because it one, it showed that the woke crowd wasn't really uh, uh, in, in, in any type of power in the city. But Eric Adams ran on reversing a lot of the things that they do. So he has begun initiating a set of measures in New York City to crack down on people who evade fares in the subway system. Do you think that this might be the start of a, a sort of broken windows policing, maybe like a different version of that that was used under Giuliani? I, you know, I do. I think little by little, people can look back and see that um, some of Giuliani's policies were excellent and it really did deter crime and things were looking a lot brighter in the 90s than they are now in New York City. So I think that's kind of, they're just gonna do a light version of it and kind of test the waters. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, it's interesting because, I mean, if Eric Adams is going to do a form of broken windows policing, he can't do it like Giuliani did. I think he has to like do it little by little. Like he's not going to be able to just implement the policy because he's already getting backlash for what he's doing already. I mean, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, he, he's, he's absolutely going to just kind of sneak it in. You know, you, you can't just do a blanket. We're doing it differently now. Um, because of his base. Now, his base is not always, you know, the progressives don't really love him, but, you know, the hardcore blue collar Democrats do like the guy. So I'm not, you know, I don't know where you're going to end up with this, but I think he's going to, you know, kind of go back to the days of, of the 90s when things were in much better, much better shape there. I think so too. I mean, and I, and I mentioned he's already getting some resistance, especially from the far left, you know, defund the police crowd. I mean, uh, Ayanna the squad. Pressley. Squad. Yes. <laughs> ex, ex, yeah, the squad. I mean, Ayanna Pressley yeah. in, in particular, she came out and she's already insinuating that Adam's policy is racist because it'll target black and brown residents. Now, they, you, they always do this. They call everything racist. But do you think that that's going to work, given the fact that Eric Adams is happens to be a black man, a melanated individual? Well, I mean, let's face it. Um, the first problem with the statement that it's a racist policy is that not only black and brown people are turnstile jumpers. <laughs> White people are, Asians are, every color under the rainbow you know, every demographic at one time or another is a turnstile jumper. So I don't think you can call it racist and go that route. Um, but I, I and it's it's kind of a tough nut to crack with a black mayor. But it's different with Eric Adams because he's not a Republican. He's a Democrat. He used to be a Republican. He is. Uh, a lot of people he, is, he is. And I mean, he's kind of a walk in that line kind of guy. Very tough on law and order, but he can't. He can't just write a blanket, you know, edict and have people like him. So in order for him to stay there and kind of do what he wants to do, he's going to have to walk that line more of a centrist, mm -hmm. kind of a moderate, not far left, not ever going to be far right. But, you know, he's got he brings both of those elements, both of those concerns from the left and the right to the table. Yeah, he does. I mean, now, but here's my other thing, and I've talked about this before. I mean, I believe that Eric Adams is, is sincere in wanting to clean up crime, but I mean, he's got these woke district attorneys. I mean, Alvin Bragg and some <laughs> others, and you know, they're, they're, they're gonna wanna release every prisoner he locks up, probably. I mean, do you think that it's even gonna be possible for Eric Adams to really clean up crime when he has DAs that sound like they don't really want him to? Well, you know, that's gonna depend on the people who put up with it or not. I mean, it can't just be a battle between progressive district attorneys and the mayor. It has to be, the people have to stand up and go, no, we elected this guy on law and order. You can't keep letting these people out of jail. There's enough pressure on, on Albany, you're gonna see uh, a bunch of things change. That it, Cause she's new too. She's walking a tightrope. Yes, yeah, speaking of Albany, so we have Governor uh, Kathy Hochul, now, her her reputation is on the line here, too. I mean, she can't afford to be seen as tough on crime. Do you think it's possible that Eric Adams and the governor might apply some pressure to these DAs to stop, you know, protecting criminals? 
Well, I think Eric Adams already kicked the can to Albany. He, he made a statement that, you know, he's laid out a blueprint and he has no control over Albany and it's the balls in their court. You know, he's he's made that clear that he will he will try to do everything that in his power in his own city. Um, but he's got to get at least a couple of people on board in order to do it. So I think, it, again, I think it goes right back to what kind of pressure that the people of of the city will put on these people or, you know, in the whole state when it comes right down to it. But New York City specifically, are they going to put up with that? Are they going to say, look, we're the biggest demographic you got going. You want to get voted in again? Then, Governor, you better start doing something that makes us happy down here. Yeah, that's true. Now, um, Eric Adams, he recently met with Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot, and you and wrote about that. <laughs> now, what's your, what's your take on that whole thing? Uh, was that really a real thing, or was this for publicity? What was going on? Uh, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't have any idea. You don't go to, you know, a place where they've labeled crime the shooterama. <laughs> um, you, you don't go there to try to figure out what they're doing right, because they're not doing anything right in Chicago. Uh, Lori Lightfoot is way out of her depth and give her, you know, she's a community activist. Yeah. Give her LGBTQ issues. Let her go running on that. But don't be the mayor of a city that needs to have a strong person that won't cave to the far left. You can't just you can't just let that happen or you end up with a city that's just completely, you know, lawless. We'll be keeping an eye on that. And I thank you very much for joining me, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. It was a pleasure. Thanks. And remember, the show is proudly sponsored by LibertyNation.com, where you can access podcasts, breaking news and analysis, and a range of biting and brilliant shows to whet your appetite for freedom and your fondness for the great American Constitution. Just go to LibertyNation.com on your browser or hit Rumble, YouTube, or check out our Liberty Nation News Roku channel. I'm Jeff Charles. Thanks for watching. This program is a production of LibertyNation.com, where truth is making a comeback. We're doing it for real. I'm Jeff Charles, contributor for LibertyNation.com. I think we're starting to make an impact. Liberty style, fight for freedom. Oh. Maybe tracking polls sponsored by Liberty Nation for yes, Thursday. Sure. Mentioned by Dan Bongino, Rasmussen, yeah. Jordan yeah. Peterson, yeah. and others. I can do it again if you want me to. Cited in Mark Levin's American Marxism. I think we're starting to make a really big impact. Get noticed. We're doing it. Rock on.